Now, Penn State football can have a top 10 class for the 2025 cycle, but it's going to take a lot of work. You are locked on Nittany Lions, your daily podcast on the Penn State Nittany Lions, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So since I talked about Penn State having the potential of a top 10 class, well, they miss out on one of those priority targets that needed to commit. This is Locked On Nittany Lions. I'm your host, Zach Seiko. And thanks so much for making us your first listen and watch every single day where you're free and available wherever you get your podcasts including YouTube. Brian Smith is back, the Locked On Podcast Network's recruiting expert to help me break it all down. Today's episode is brought to you by the leaders in job recruiting, since we're talking about recruiting on the show, LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash college. Terms and conditions apply. You can check out all of Brian's work down in the description. Links will be provided. Brian, Matthew Outen committed to Virginia Tech. That's where we'll begin as we need to go through Penn State's remaining needs, remaining priority targets. Uh, we'll debate the top 10 class in the final segment, but just kind of going through the likelihood of these players ultimately leading to that conclusion. Well, they're not off to a good start as <laughs> Matthew Outen was, it looked like, Penn State was going to be the place, but out and opts to stay home. You brought it up on the show in the beginning when we first previewed official visits, and you said Alton is a dude. Penn State cannot afford to miss on him. It doesn't matter what that recruiting rating says. He oh, is sure. one of the most athletic kids in this class. Yeah, sometimes it, it happens like that. Once the name gets out, though, in a few schools, especially the home schools, they don't, mm -hmm. they don't like it when they have a chance to get a kid and – they can say, hey, you can be the guy to change our class, change our program, et cetera. Sure. You know what? That's that's part of it, man. Uh, you're going to miss some kids like this, but it is July. <laughs> so yes. I highly doubt that Penn State, based on what I know about their coaching staff, they're not going to fail to stay with this kid and keep recruiting him. It, this could be one of those stories where other schools get involved, too. You could see Oregon or Texas or Georgia or anybody. Mm. When somebody like that offers, then it just goes into hyperdrive. Don't consider this necessarily done yet. Yeah, for the time being, Virginia Tech, Brent Pry actually beat Penn State at, at this game. It feels like Penn State has, you know, for DC, Maryland, Virginia has always been the place that Penn State has had, you know, very good recruiting set success because there's, I, I would say, you know, part of it is Penn State's own doing. Part of it is there's limited resistance with UVA, Maryland, and. Oof. But Virginia Tech starting to put themselves back into the conversation and a little bit of friendly fire here is that's a protege of James Franklin, Brent Pry. You know what? I think that's good for college football, though. because It is. Like, I, I've never understood why Maryland is a mediocre. I mean, it's next to Washington, D.C. There's no excuse for them in particular, but that's another subject. Virginia Tech had a lot of success because they had good coaching. And yep. You know, UVA has got the academic thing, but it's a beautiful campus. All those schools have a chance, and they never seem to be consistent. Hopefully, Tech, based on last year and their young quarterback, can be one of those schools. It's just better to have some of those programs good, in my opinion. So good for them, but they still have to start winning more of these battles. Maybe this is the first of many for the, for the Hokies, but need a ways to go. Well, their loss and their lack of success is Penn State's gain in this case. As, like I said, the DMV has just been very, very kind to Penn State recruiting. Yes, <laughs> now, but there's still wide receivers targets just because Matthew Outen doesn't. And, and I said this. I said, if Matt, Matthew Outen does, in fact, commit to Virginia Tech as the signs, you know, at the last second, we're starting to point to that because this was truly a quiet commitment. Penn State is still in good standing with Lex Cyrus, with Taz Williams. And now Kobe Howard kind of comes into the conversation as well. Brian, well, let's actually start with Howard because Penn State fans are mostly going to be familiar with Lex Cyrus, who's an in-state kid, and then Taz Williams, who seemed like a Michigan projection once upon a time, now is getting closer to a potential Penn State commit. But Kobe Howard is kind of a name that's just been under the radar simply because he was a Florida native and not really someone that had made a lot of noise with Penn State in his top choices of schools. That doesn't mean he can't do it now. Uh, he's taking a visit. He's a kid that's a big time receiver, explosive player, makes plays with his feet after the catch, and he runs by guys. 
Look, Penn State needs more of that in their offense. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> they need more of that in their offense. He's you don't have to tell me going. twice. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure Penn State fans in general are ready to take him now. But this is all you need to know about Kobe. I am blessed to get to see Florida kids and South, South Florida kids all the time. Mm -hmm. When I saw him as a freshman, after three reps, I knew he was a major power five guy. As a freshman. He was running by kids that were older. There was a guy there. At this workout I was at, ended up signing with Florida State at corner. He was better than him. What's that tell you? Yeah. So he's a really good football player, and he's just really competitive. Never have enough of those guys either. If Penn State wants to consistently go down into South Florida and get kids, getting a Shamanad Madonna receiver, that's where Jeremiah Smith went, by the way, is a good way mm -hmm. to do it. So he would be an excellent addition. I messaged with him. I think it's going to be this weekend that he's going to make his decision. He told me the sixth, that's Saturday. I don't, you know, I didn't ask any more than that, but barring something unforeseen, that's when it's going to be. Okay. So he has a decision upcoming and that's important given the fact that Penn state want, wants to ideally take, I think at least four, but five really is where they should be. And so Taz Williams, Lex Cyrus would be that third and fourth. And then Kobe Howard, would be that fifth in no particular order, right? They just need five. I think they need five wide receiver commitments at the end of the day. They have Lyric Samuel, who was the first one to commit, Jeff Axner most recently, and now we're naming these other three. I feel like it's a loss if they don't get at least two of them. I hate putting them under pressure, but I would agree. You need more bullets in the gun until you can prove you can throw it around and impress kids. And these are good players anyway, mm -hmm. but this off, I mean, the offense should take off. I mean, the guy they just hired is a really good coordinator. This shouldn't be that hard to keep the kids in the fold with him as the coordinator. And you got an experienced quarterback, good running back. This should be pretty easy. I, I think you got to hit while the iron is hot here, man. They have a chance to have a good season offensively. And you got all these kids. They've done a good job of getting them on campus. Can't let it slip through your, through your fingers. They need to hit. In the case of Kobe Howard, uh, I know Ole Miss is a strong suitor as well, and they just had – I've lost count of how many decommitments they've had in, in the past. Yeah, I don't week, know what's so. going on with Ole Miss. It is bizarre. Yeah, so the Re the Rebels will certainly be out to try to recoup some of that uh, ground loss in the recruiting battle. So I, I would not be surprised if uh, – again, this so much can change in just a matter of days. We figured that out with recruiting, uh, but – Kobe Howard, it, Penn State's a strong player. Ole Miss is going to be simply because they have to. I, I feel like their backs are against the wall, but I, you know, I'm closer aligned with Penn State and have a little more expertise here than I would as far as what Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss are, are doing over there. But there's still, Brian, there's still plenty of other needs to talk about. Wide receivers, certainly one of them, because like I said, ideally you want to land five. That is a major win, but if you happen to lose out on two out of the three, that is going to be a loss for the class of 2025. Penn State still doesn't have any defensive tackle commits. They still need more edge rushers, defensive ends, simply because there's going to be a lot of turnover after this season. We'll discuss some of the other needs that Penn State has in this class of 2025 coming up next. And today's show is brought to you by Game Time. You got to download the Game Time app because buying tickets to your favorite events should not be stressful. I enjoy going to Major League Baseball games over the summer, and Game Time is the is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. And get this, prices on the Game Time app actually go down as it gets closer to first pitch. I've used the Game Time app to get tickets to Pirate games, Philly games. I've also used the Game Time app to get tickets to baseball games that are out of market when I'm out of town. So take the guesswork out of getting Major League Baseball tickets for yourself. You get killer last minute deals, all in pricing, views from your seat and lowest price guarantee. And that's going to make it easier and so much smoother to get tickets to your favorite baseball games. Now, that's not the only thing that Game Time offers. They offer tickets to all kinds of sporting events, concerts, comedy and theater, so much more. You can save up to 60% when buying those last minute tickets. You have flash deals as well. And I've mentioned the all in pricing and probably the best feature, the views from your seat. So you're not second guessing yourself. Take the guesswork out of buying Major League Baseball tickets and so much more with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create that account and use promo code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. 
let's pick back up with the defensive line, Brian, because yes, they did get three back to back to back edge commits in a span of just 72 hours, right? It was days that Dion Barnes was able to pick up those defensive end commits. They still don't have any interior defensive linemen. Now they did do very well in the class of 2024, but there's still going to be turnover in the middle of the defensive line. Devon J. Thomas, it is no longer Devon Ellis. Devon J. Thomas is going to be moving on. He'll be out of eligibility. Uh, Hakeem Beeman's going to be the same thing. What about Zane Durant? If he has a good season, could he play his way into a higher NFL draft selection? There's just going to be a lot of turnover on the defensive line in general. And then you got to imagine Abdul Carter is going to go, deny Dennis Sutton. I mean, Vanover, Smith Vilbert are going to be out of el eligibility. Ryan, they they need more than just the three defensive end commits and no defensive tackles. That That is not good, even though they had a lot of recent success here. If they don't have more than like Randy Adariga, they got a shot at a defensive tackle. Mm -hmm. Here's the problem. The portal is so expensive for D tackle. That's rough. Now, you can still take big DNs and move them inside. They've done that with some other guys, but that's still risky business. It sounds like to me they need a ready-made D-tackle. They'll probably have to find a way to spend some money on a D-tackle in the portal wow. for the 25 <laughs> season. Not what they want to do. Easier And easier said than done. Yeah, because like it's, that's 800 k to a million dollars. Literally. Wow. wow. Yeah. yeah, for the elite. I mean, it is. If you're trying to compete for a title, that's the, you know there's just so few of them, you have to overpay. So it is what it is. At that same point, I mean, Penn State's not dying on the depth chart. They got some other younger players. Absolutely. But do you, but do you have a stalwart coming up, like a five-star guy that you just know it's he's just waiting his turn because there's seniors ahead of him? Do they? That's the difference between Georgia and Bama and everybody else. Like they always have that guy. Right. So it it just is true. I don't know if Penn State's going to get an elite kid, but they develop really well. And if you keep getting kids every single year, play junior, seniors, fifth year seniors, you're okay. Can't have a class where you get a goose egg at D-tackle, though. That is a no-no. So they need to figure that out in a hurry. I mean, again, they did get a lot of commitments in the class of 2024. I think the name that you're going to be familiar with, Brian, is T.A. Cunningham, because yeah. he has all the potential in the world, but fell you know, way down the recruiting rankings because you know transfer issues, never being able to see the football field again, and then kind of quietly makes his way up to, you know, doesn't even finish out his high school playing days and then makes his way up to state college and enrolls early, which is good. But Penn state has a lot of ground to gain on his development. If he's going to be, you know, the one that comes up the depth chart next, but that's, like I said, it, the jury's still out on any of them. I think Liam Andrews has potential. I like what Cunningham has to offer, but it, nothing, nothing is set in stone, but there is, again, you're losing potentially four veterans in the middle of the defensive line, you're guaranteed to probably lose all four of the names at defensive end. So Randy Adarika is a must get. You cannot miss. You cannot lose to USC. We've talked about it. It sounds like Miami, where he was projected most likely to go, is not going to be the case. So it's down to Penn State and USC unless the Hurricanes somehow turn it around. Recruitment with South Florida kids can be that way. Uh, it's really wild. Oh. <laughs> it's always been that. And not that anybody's shocked by that. Mm -hmm. But the last I heard is they didn't think they were going to get it. So we're in July. I get it. But he's a 280-pound kid that I'm sure Miami is still interested in. So great kid. Uh, has been on the radar for quite a while. From those among us that know that you know he, he can be a big-time player, uh, Jim Joseph, the head coach at Central, told me about him a couple years ago. I think that Penn State would do quite well to get him. And again, who else are they going to get if they don't? Yeah. You got to look at the options. I mean, what would their number two option be, Zach? Who is the most likely DT they're going to get if they don't get Randy? As a serious contender, I mean, they're, they're long shots for guys like Jarquez Carter, for example. I know Ohio State's been a strong player. Miami Hurricanes as well. Okay, again, go figure. He's from the state of Florida. Miami's going to be involved in his recruitment. I owe say Epinesa, who has the lay AJ, his older brother, has the legacy in Big Ten football. But the, that's not, oh, you know, I feel really good about Penn State landing and commitment. That's the, Penn State would really have to pull off another shocker to get either of the Epinesa or Carter. So it's really Randy Adarica or nothing at defensive tackle, honestly. 
That is not a good way to live, brother. In this As of right now, that's how we that's how we stand in early July. That's what I that's what I've gathered. That's what you've gathered as well. That there's really not a lot of uh, Penn State would be probably really going down its big board, its recruiting rankings. If there's another defense, as far as defensive tackles that they like and quality high end four stars, those are the three biggest options, and only one of them seems to be the most like 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 realistic. Randy Adarika. Well, Zach, they may need you to come back to Penn State and start eating. <laughs> <laughs> eating more. <laughs> so. Well, I don't know what to tell you. That's a spot they're going to have to figure out because you got to get two pretty much in every class. Um, I would like to see them get three DNs in this class if they they would really like. Maybe they can get Mathis to, to flip. They're not doing bad there. they got a couple of good players, but – can't have enough DNs, and if nothing else, you could always take another big end as well that could develop into a D tackle for down the road. Well, and they and they tried that. They have tried that. Devon Townley is probably not a name that you're readily familiar with, Brian, but Penn State fans know him because Townley was in and out of the transfer portal, started as a defensive end. They wanted to move him to defensive tackle. So <laughs> Penn State has tried to play that game, and that is one player prospect that never actually worked out. But that is what essentially they're trying to do, a bigger defensive end that they ultimately move inside to defensive tackle. I think Amin Vanover falls in that category, but he's just been so good at defensive end that they never moved him. He is larger. He could have maybe put on the extra weight and moved to D tackle, but they said, you know what? You're just too polished as a defensive end that we want to keep you there. So you're right to say that Penn State is doing that and is trying to do that successfully. It's not uncommon because, to be honest, there are only about 15 guys a year tops at D-tackle that most of the schools want. And then there's a bunch of flyers because kids are big or have the right frame. There just aren't enough of them. So, and about a third of them go to about four or five schools that we all know. And maybe even more than that. You got to find a way to get there, though. And Penn State, the last two, three years, they took several kids that moved around from different spots and ended up at tackle and were really successful they may have to go that route again, but the, the path might be a little more winding. I'm okay with that if you can get there, but uh makes me a little nervous too. So we've covered wide receiver, defense, defensive line in general, defensive tackle, defensive end. Again, Penn State has done good enough in this case, again, with the quality of players between X Granville. You get Jaden Woods out of the state of Kansas. You add Cortez Harris and Penn State, I don't think is finished getting defensive end players but they still need guys at linebacker, especially after DJ De DJ McClary decommitted and flipped to Rutgers. Is Penn State going to have a top 10 class at the end of the day? I think they can, but they're almost going to have to have a hit rate above 90% on these commits if they're going to want to do that. We'll discuss that on the other side of this break. Brian, I'm glad that you brought up flipping Zaheer Mathis. Penn State is not finished recruiting defensive ends. They certainly need – I ideally, they want to take four. I mean, three, three is a good baseline. They want to flip Zaheer Mathis. Never say it, – it's unlikely, but never say never. Again, again, he's committed to Ohio State. It's not like he's committed to a, another – a school that Penn State is currently higher in status than. Ohio State has run Big Ten football for more of the past decade until recently. Michigan. Linebacker, they got to figure it out there too. Deshaun Burnett, Alex Tatch, uh, DJ McClary ends up flipping to Rutgers. Okay, well, good news might be on the way. LeVar Arrington, the second son of LeVar Arrington, who had an incredible career at Penn State. It seems to be on his way to committing to Penn State. That's one, again, that I sit back. Is it realistic? And how you know how strongly do I feel about it? And Arrington II could and most likely will join Penn State's class of 2025. But I, is that going to be enough to keep them inside the top 10? Again, mi missing on Matthew Alton is a big deal. If they don't get at least two of those three remaining serious wide receiver targets, if they miss out on Randy Adarika, if they don't flip to here, Mathis, then you can forget about a top 10 class for 2025. When I said that they have the potential to do it, yes, they do, but that means they're going to have to get all of those players that I just named and then maybe a Malachi Goodman, for example. That's a name that's kind of been a little bit oh. quiet here. Auburn, USC, some other schools just continuing to recruit him just as tough as Penn State is, but that's certainly not a guarantee it can happen. So if Penn State misses on 
half of those players forget about a top 10 class. Hey, they still did really good for this cycle. I think given what we've seen with NIL issues, but I, do you think even if they did land, let's say best case scenario, Brian, that they do land a majority of those players. Is that a top 10 class in your mind? It'd be on the fringe. And you got to remember other schools are adding players too. Um, my concern is like, how are you doing the grading? Like certain sites can just go by points and it has nothing to do with roster balance. That's how I, that's how I look at it. Like, did Penn State mm. get any more D tackles? If they don't, they don't get any D tackles. To me, it's not a top fifteen class. You could never have classes without D tackles. But at the same time, the skill spots they needed help. They need edge rushers. They're doing well with those. And it looks like the offense, especially if they get Malachi, like that's a really good offensive line. Mm. Have no idea. Nobody down here in the South knows where he's going either. Everybody's just kind of waiting. So yeah. that's radio silence. They they need to finish with a couple of bangs though. And they got to get, they got to figure out the D tackle thing. So I don't know if that's a top 10 class or not, but it's not like it's terrible. And Penn state's getting more speed at the receiver spot. So if nothing else, Nittany lion fans will be happy to see the ball in the air a little bit. Well, Penn state has 20 commits thus far. Again, it's a so it's a solid class, but if you intend to win national championships, you have to be consistently in the top 10, top 20, not even top 15 gets it done. You have no, to be, no. if you're ninth, eighth, seventh, okay, that's inside the top 10. That's good. But Penn State, like I said, they, they need to get Malachi Goodman, high priority, getting at least two of those wide receivers, flipping Zaheer Mathis, getting Randy Adarika, because I do genuinely like this class. You got three running backs. There's going to be a lot of turnover at defensive end, running back, defensive tackle. And so far, those positions seem to be covered at the very minimum. Three running backs, three defensive ends. Hey, that's a good start. You got five defensive backs. You got a quarterback. You know, Beckham Kritza, the jury's still out on how good he can be, what's his potential. But if Penn State likes him that much, they're going to, they took his commitment pretty early. And that's for good reason. So James Franklin and Andy Koto Nicky obviously very much like him as a quarterback prospect and why they would pass on the opportunity to have Malik Washington potentially in their class and just focus on 2026. So there are good things about this class. But the debate is not, okay, is it good or not? And that's not the debate here. How good is it? Is it a top 10? And it can be, but there's a lot of work to still be done. Yeah, I think you have to look at it like we're in a position, if we, especially if they play well, like they beat Michigan or whatever team it is, they beat somebody this fall. Ohio, Ohio State, State would, yeah. be that, would be that giant. Yeah, if they do something like that, they got a better chance. But they've gotten a lot of great players on campus, and they'll probably get somebody back on campus this fall that matters. Maybe it's for the whiteout game, whatever. Yeah. I'm not counting them out, but they got some holes to fill. D tackles top of the board to worry about. They need another big offensive lineman. Getting Mathis would be nice. Big name guys, like big game hunting is what we talk about. Recruiting, that's where Penn State's at because they got plenty of talent. Now it's just filling out the class with elite players. Don't take kids just to take them. I'm glad you've been the one to point out just how important defensive tackle is. I mean, Michigan, I uh, if you oh. look at the if you look yeah. at the defensive tackle ratings going into 2024, I think what Michigan has two of the top 10 play defensive tackles in the entire country. Not the Big 10, in the entire country. And that you could argue top 5 as well. That's going to get you somewhere. That's at least going to get you eight That's wins. Right. Yeah, like I, I don't know how many guys I've talked to when I tell them, if you can have second and six, will you take it? They always say yes. Like it's Michigan's defensive front. Go ahead and try to run it. How many times are you going to get four yards on a first down run? One and four? Like it's really hard. You can't block their nose guard with one guy. Can't do it. Mm -hmm. He's a guy that would play at Georgia and be a zero technique. He just happens to play in Michigan State. similar, but mm -hmm. that you have to use two guys on him and everybody else just runs the football. It is a nightmare to face them. I'm not saying Penn State's getting that guy. But he was a kid out of Maryland, so that's a kid Penn State missed on. But at the same time, they're just a player or two away. It's frustrating when you're on that that edge. But Michigan got those guys. You got to give Harbaugh staff credit. Like they evaluated, found guys for their scheme to fit, and they finalized in recruiting. Penn State's got to do the same thing. There, there's no excuse. You're Penn State. 
That's going to do it for this edition of Locked On Nittany Lions. As always, check out Brian's work in the description if you want more takes on recruiting from the national perspective. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you're not already for more coverage around your favorite Penn State sports teams. Brian, thanks so much for the time as always, and we'll catch up in just about another week. Thank you, sir. And as always, thanks so much for checking out this episode of Locked On Nittany Lions. Be a part of the conversation down in the comments section. Do you think Penn State finishes with a top 10 class in 2025? Your favorite recruits, potential commits, who do you think Penn State still needs to land to complete this class of 2025? Be a part of the discussion. If you did enjoy this discussion with myself and Brian, please leave a like on the episode, share it with friends and family. I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you're not already, become an everyday or subscribe to Locked On Nittany Lions on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts for the latest conversations around your favorite Penn State sports teams. And of course, don't forget, Locked On has launched the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked on Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus the national shows covering each and every league. You can find Locked on Sports Today now available on YouTube and the free Fire TV channels app.